My name is Ella, the proud mother of a wonderful girl and the wife of a man I adored more than anything. Our family, to an outsider, was a portrait of ideal harmony, a loving husband, a brilliant child, and a home full of love. But within this seemingly perfect family lurked a toxic entity, my sister-in-law, Grace. My husband, Tom, was a man of considerable charm and compassion. His love for me was undeniable and his devotion to our family was beyond question. He was, however, an individual marked by an unflattering trait of being weak-willed. An otherwise strong man, Tom's heart softened at the merest sight of his family. To most, this might seem an admirable trait, but when that family included Grace, it became our downfall. My daughter, Lily, was an exceptional girl. Despite being on the heavier side, her radiance made her the most beautiful child in my eyes. Her intelligence was unrivaled, often outshining children twice her age. She was the light of our life, a light that unfortunately attracted the wrong kind of attention. Grace was the woman who married into our family but never quite became a part of it. Her primary occupation, it seemed, was to torment Lily. She was an unpleasant woman, devoid of the warmth that characterizes most women of her age. Grace had a knack for making others feel small, a talent she practiced religiously on Lily. She'd take any chance to make snide comments about Lily's weight or compare her with her own slender children. The first time it happened, I was taken aback. Lily, only ten then, had come back from a family gathering, her eyes filled with tears. Aunt Grace called me fat, she whispered, her voice small. I remember holding her close, trying to take away the hurt from her words, telling her that she was beautiful just the way she was. But words can leave scars far deeper than any physical wound, and the more Grace's words echoed in her ears, the more Lily seemed to withdraw into a shell. Tom and I had endless conversations about Grace's behavior. Tom, we need to do something about Grace, I would plead. But each time, he would dismiss my concerns. She's just joking, Ella. She loves Lily, he would say. His refusal to see the truth of his sister's actions frustrated me to no end. I couldn't understand how a man who loved his daughter so much could stand idle as she was being tormented. One evening, Grace was particularly cruel. Lily, excited about a science project she had aced at school, was sharing her achievement. Grace, in her characteristic style, deflated Lily's excitement. That's all well and good, Lily, but have you looked at yourself in the mirror lately? Maybe if you spent less time with these projects and more time exercising, you wouldn't be so. Large. I was seething. Lily looked devastated. I caught Tom's eye, waiting for him to step in to defend his daughter. But he remained silent. That was the moment I realized that my beautiful family was far from perfect. As I held Lily close, I knew something had to change. It was the beginning of a battle, a battle that would test our bonds and reveal the true nature of our seemingly perfect family. One might think that being part of a loving family would protect you from the cruelties of the world, at least within the confines of your home. But for Lily, home became a battlefield, and her opponent was none other than her Aunt Grace. Grace had a way of embedding cruelty into her conversations, making her jibes seem as casual as asking about the weather. Each visit was a new round of torment for Lily, every encounter a fresh source of pain. She'd find the most hurtful words and wrap them in layers of faint concern or hollow praise turning even Lily's accomplishments into sources of humiliation. During one Sunday dinner, Lily excitedly told us about an essay competition she'd won at school. But before we could celebrate, Grace chimed in. Oh, how wonderful dear, she'd cooed, her voice sugary sweet. But darling, do remember that while words might help you win competitions, it's a slim waist that wins hearts. Perhaps you should ship some of that brain power towards shedding a few pounds. Tom and I exchanged glances, his full of plea for calm, mine brimming with indignation. I clenched my jaw, trying to keep my composure for Lily's sake, but the sting of Grace's words were too sharp to ignore. Another time, Grace arrived with her own children in tow, kids who had been schooled in their mother's art of mockery. She dressed them in matching slim-fit outfits, creating a stark contrast to Lily's rounder shape. Look at them, Lily, she said, gesturing towards her slender children. Perhaps you could learn something from them. Maybe if you spent less time on those books and more time playing outside, you could look more like them, more acceptable. My heart ached for Lily. I could see her spirit dwindling with each hurtful comment, each unfair comparison. A once vivacious girl was being replaced by a quieter, sadder version. Her smiles became rare, her laughter even rarer. She would spend hours in her room, 
away from the eyes of those she feared would judge her. I don't understand why Aunt Grace doesn't like me. She'd sob into my shoulder, her body shaking with sobs. Why is she so mean, Mom? I held her close, wishing I could shield her from Grace's cruelty, wishing I could absorb her pain. But it seemed like Grace's words, as poisonous as they were, had found their way deep into Lily's psyche. My reassurances, while offering temporary solace, seemed ineffective against the consistent barrage of negativity she faced. In my heart, I knew I had to do something. I knew I had to find a way to protect Lily, to save her from the woman who was causing her so much harm. But standing up to Grace meant standing up to Tom, something that seemed harder than facing Grace's cruelty. And yet, I knew I had no other choice. As the saying goes, the true measure of a man is how he treats someone who can do him absolutely no good. My husband Tom was a perfect example of this. His heart was in the right place, full of love for his family, but his spine lacked the strength needed to defend us. Tom and I had countless conversations about Grace's behavior, each one more frustrating than the last. Tom, I would begin, a weariness in my voice that came from fighting too many battles. We can't let Grace continue this way. Lily suffering. He would look at me with those soft eyes of his, filled with concern and a hint of annoyance. Ella, he would sigh, you're blowing things out of proportion. Grace loves Lily. She's just tough on her because she wants her to do better. One evening, after a particularly harsh visit from Grace, I decided to confront Tom once again. I found him in his study, engrossed in some paperwork. Tom, I began, my voice shaking with barely suppressed anger, we need to talk. Tom looked up from his work, a slight frown on his face. What is it, Ella? He asked, concern creeping into his voice as he noticed my clenched fists. It's Grace, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. I can't let her continue hurting Lily. He sighed, running a hand through his hair. Ella, we've been through this, Grace is just. I cut him off, just what, Tom? Just being cruel. Just belittling our daughter at every chance she gets. How can you defend her when you've seen what she's doing to Lily? Tom looked taken aback, I'm not defending her, Ella. I just, I don't think she means to harm Lily. I couldn't believe my ears. Don't think she means to harm Lily. Are you listening to yourself, Tom? Lily cries herself to sleep because of Grace. How can you not see that? Tom looked pained. I see it, Ella, but Grace is my sister. I can't just, I can't just tell her to leave. I was astounded. So, what? We just let her destroy our daughter because she's your sister. Tom looked at me, a helplessness in his eyes that I'd never seen before. I don't know, Ella, I just, I don't know. I left the room then, my heart heavy with disappointment. I had hoped for Tom's support, his assurance that he would stand by our daughter. But all I got was his confusion and his inability to stand up to his sister. It was clear to me then that if I wanted to protect Lily, I had to do it myself. My mother used to tell me that a mother's love for her child was like a lioness's for her cub, fierce, protective, and unyielding. It was only when I became a mother myself that I truly understood what she meant. With each cruel word from Grace, I felt an urge to protect Lily that overpowered all reason. I held her, comforted her, spent hours reassuring her of her worth. I would sit by her side, our hands entwined, and tell her how smart she was, how beautiful, how loved. I tried to reverse the damage that Grace had inflicted to drown out her venomous words with my love. But no amount of reassurance seemed to silence the echo of Grace's words in Lily's mind. Desperate to help Lily, we turned to professionals. Therapists, nutritionists, even personal trainers, we tried it all. Lily was put on diet plans and workout regimens, all in the hope that if she could lose weight, maybe Grace's taunts would stop. But the strain was too much for Lily, and her mental state only worsened. Each failed attempt at losing weight felt like another victory for Grace, and I could see Lily's spirit faltering. One evening, after a particularly difficult therapy session, I found Lily in her room, her eyes red and puffy from crying. Mom, she sobbed, clutching at me as if I was her lifeline. Why can't I be like the other girls? Why can't I be slim and pretty like Aunt Grace's kids? The desperation in her voice was a punch to my gut. I held her close, fighting back my own tears. Lily, I whispered into her hair, you are so much more than what Aunt Grace sees. You are kind, you are smart, and you are beautiful. You don't have to change for anyone, darling. Lily cried harder, her body shaking with sobs. But I want to change, Mom. I want to be normal. I don't want to be fat anymore. Seeing my little girl in so much pain, 
hearing her talk about herself with so much hatred, it broke my heart. I vowed then and there to do whatever it took to protect Lily from Grace. I knew it wouldn't be easy, and it might cost me my marriage, but my daughter's well-being was worth any price. Tension hung heavy in our home in the days following Lily's tearful confession. I was at war with myself, battling between the woman who loved her husband and the mother who'd do anything to protect her child. I knew what I had to do, but the prospect of it filled me with a deep sense of dread. Tom could sense the change, the newfound determination in my eyes. One evening, as the sun set, casting long shadows across our living room, I decided it was time. Tom, I began, my voice steady despite the turmoil within, we need to talk. He turned towards me, his brow furrowed. What is it, Ella? He asked, anxiety creeping into his voice. I took a deep breath, gathering my courage. It's about Grace, I said, meeting his gaze and Lily. Tom sighed, pinching the bridge of his nose. Not this again, Ella. I told you, Grace. Grace is hurting our daughter, Tom. I interrupted, unable to contain my frustration. I won't stand by and watch her destroy Lily. I won't. Tom looked taken aback. Ella, I, I understand your concern. But Grace is my sister. I can't just cut her off. That's where you're wrong, Tom, I said, a steely determination in my voice. You have a choice. You can choose your sister, who's causing pain and misery, or you can choose us, your wife and daughter. Tom looked at me, shock written all over his face. You're asking me to choose between you and Grace? He asked, incredulity tinging his voice. Yes, Tom, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. That's exactly what I'm asking. But, but I can't, Ella, he said, his voice shaking. I can't cut off my sister. Then you've made your choice, I said, tears welling in my eyes. And I've made mine. Tom watched me, stunned, as I walked away. I had given him an ultimatum, one I wished I never had to. But for Lily, I would do anything, even if it meant tearing our family apart. The decision to leave the man I loved was one of the most painful choices I had ever made. The days leading up to our separation were filled with heated arguments, tearful conversations, and sleepless nights. As the reality of our situation began to sink in, I found myself grappling with the weight of my decision. I can't believe you're doing this, Ella, Tom would say, his voice filled with disbelief. Leaving me for something my sister said. You don't understand, Tom, I would respond, my voice quivering with frustration. It's not just something your sister said. It's the hurt she's inflicted on Lily. It's the indifference you've shown towards it. Tom would look at me, his eyes filled with sadness and betrayal. I never thought you'd leave me, Ella, not over something like this. Our conversations would always end the same way, with both of us at a stalemate, neither willing to back down. And so, the day arrived when Lily and I packed our bags and walked out of the life we had known. Leaving the home we had built together was heartbreaking. Each room held a memory, a fragment of our past that was now tainted with regret. As I watched our house recede in the rearview mirror, I felt a pang of sorrow. But I knew I was making the right choice. Life away from Tom was challenging, but it was also liberating. It was painful to see Lily miss her father, but the absence of Grace's constant bullying allowed her to breathe. We moved into a small apartment and started afresh. It wasn't easy. The silence in our home was a stark contrast to the laughter that had once filled it. But with each passing day, we grew stronger, more resilient. I found a job to support us and Lily started therapy. She was gradually coming out of her shell, starting to laugh and smile again. It was a slow process, but I could see her regaining her confidence. Her mental health was improving and she even started to lose weight naturally. As I watched my daughter transform, I knew that despite the pain, despite the loss, we were on the right path. Days turned into weeks, weeks into months, and life in our new home began to take shape. We found comfort in the little things, the warmth of our small apartment, the shared silence over breakfast, the sound of Lily's laughter echoing off the walls. It was during one of our evening walks when Lily, her hand in mine, turned to me and said, Mom, I think I'm happy. Her words, simple yet powerful, brought tears to my eyes. I squeezed her hand, whispering, Me too, sweetheart. Me too. We started cooking together, creating healthy recipes that were both fun and delicious. The kitchen became our sanctuary, a place where we laughed, shared stories, and healed. It was during these cooking sessions that I watched Lily's relationship with food change. Once a source of stress and shame, it was now a medium of creativity and joy. Our conversations, once dominated by Grace's insults and Lily's self-doubt, 
now revolved around books, movies, school, friends, normal things. I watched as Lily slowly shed the weight of her past, growing stronger with each passing day. She was transforming, not just physically, but mentally as well. I don't care what Aunt Grace thinks anymore, Lily confided in me one day, a steely determination in her eyes. I am who I am, and I won't let her words define me. Her words filled me with a sense of pride I cannot put into words. My little girl was learning to stand up for herself, to fight the bullies that tried to bring her down. I stood by her side, supporting her through her journey. I cheered her on during her therapy sessions, encouraged her when she doubted herself, and held her when the memories of the past overwhelmed her. We were in this together, fighting our battles, healing from our wounds. As Lily found her freedom, I found mine. I was no longer just Tom's wife or Grace's sister-in-law. I was Ella, a woman who had stood up against injustice, a mother who had fought for her child, a survivor. Our past may have been marred by pain and betrayal, but our future was bright, full of hope and promise. While Lily and I were carving out a new life for ourselves, Tom was spiraling into a world of deception and exploitation, orchestrated by none other than his beloved sister Grace and her husband. One day, out of the blue, Tom called. His voice, once full of confidence and warmth, was now filled with an unmistakable weariness. Ella, he began, I need to talk to you about something. Intrigued yet wary, I responded, All right, Tom. What is it? There was a pause and I could almost picture him, running his fingers through his hair, a frown creasing his forehead. It's about Grace and her husband David. My heart pounded as he shared his tale of deceit. After our separation, Tom, in his loneliness and guilt, had turned to Grace and David for support. Blinded by his trust in his sister, he had given them the reins of his real estate and company. Grace and David, seizing this opportunity, began to manipulate him, slowly and cunningly siphoning off his wealth. I trusted them, Ella, Tom confessed, his voice choked with regret. But they betrayed me, they took everything. I listened, a strange mix of emotions slutting me. Why are you telling me this, Tom? I asked, my voice steady despite the tumult within me. I, I thought you should know, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. And, and I wanted to apologize. I should have listened to you, Ella, about everything. There was a bitter irony to his downfall. The man who had refused to see his sister's cruelty was now her victim. The same blind faith that had torn our family apart had led to his destruction. As I hung up the phone, I felt a wave of sadness wash over me, not for the man he had become, but for the man he used to be. In the weeks that followed, Tom began reaching out to me more frequently. His calls were laden with regret and pleas for forgiveness, each conversation a confession of his guilt and his wish for redemption. But forgiveness was a luxury I was not ready to afford him. One evening, as I sat down to dinner with Lily, there was a knock at the door. Opening it, I found Tom standing on the other side. He looked like a shadow of his former self, his usual chair replaced with a weary resignation. Ella, he started, his voice filled with desperation. I need to talk to you. Inviting him in, we sat in the living room, an awkward silence stretching between us. Finally, Tom broke the silence. I know I messed up, Ella. I ignored Grace's bullying. I didn't stand up for Lily. I, I failed you. His words hung heavy in the air, echoing the truth I had known for so long. But hearing them from him, hearing him acknowledge his failures, brought forth a wave of emotions I hadn't expected. I want to make it right, Ella, he continued, his voice trembling. I want to be the husband you deserved, the father Lily needed. I, I want your forgiveness. Looking into his eyes, I saw regret, pain, and a desperation to correct his mistakes. But it was too late. Too much damage had been done. Our lives had moved on from the chaos he had once allowed to prevail. Tom, I began, my voice calm yet firm, I appreciate your honesty. But you can't undo what's been done. Lily and I, we've moved on, we're happy. But Ella, he began, only to be cut off by me. Tom, it's over. We've built a new life, one that doesn't include you or your sister. We don't need your apologies or your regret. We're doing just fine. As he left, I felt a sense of closure I hadn't realized I needed. Our past was behind us, a part of our lives we could now truly leave behind. The weeks and months after Tom's visit passed by in a blur. Lily continued to flourish, her confidence growing each day. She was no longer the timid, insecure child, mirrored by her aunt's cruel words. She was vibrant, resilient, and unapologetically herself. 
Our bond had only strengthened since our separation from Tom. We were more than mother and daughter. We were each other's best friend, confidant, and greatest cheerleader. We found joy in the simplest of things, a sunny day, a good book, or the scent of freshly baked cookies. One day as we sat in the park, Lily turned to me with a curious gaze. Mom, do you ever miss Dad? Her question took me by surprise. I had thought about Tom, yes, but did I miss him? I pondered over her question before answering, I miss what we used to be, Lily, but I don't miss what we became. She nodded, understanding reflecting in her eyes. Do you think he's sorry for what he did? She asked. I believe he is, I responded, but apologizing doesn't always fix the things we break. Lily seemed to understand. Her questions didn't bear any bitterness or resentment. Instead, they held a mature understanding far beyond her years. Seeing her growth made me believe that every decision I made, however painful, had been worth it. Our life wasn't perfect, but it was ours. And despite the battles we had fought, it was filled with love, resilience, and an indomitable spirit. We had not only survived but thrived in our newfound freedom, creating a life we both loved and cherished. It was a new beginning for both of us, a fresh start untouched by the shadows of our past. Looking at Lily, her eyes full of hope and dreams, I knew we would be okay. We had weathered the storm and emerged stronger. We had reclaimed our lives from the clutches of bullying and apathy, and we wouldn't let anything take that away from us. As we walked home, hand in hand, I realized we had indeed forged a new beginning. And as I looked at the road ahead, I knew it would be a journey filled with hope, love, and endless possibilities.